on the guitar. John is the hard. Broadcast the is live. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we are live, guys. I'd like to say hi to the Cruz Amigos. So, hi to. Hey, Pete. How are we doing? I'm doing. <laughs> we're doing very well, actually. Well, I'll talk to you in a second about that. Hi, John. John's in Minnesota. If you're watching us on Facebook, if you're watching us on um, on YouTube, please send us a message. Um, guys, if you can check that we have gone live on those. We are we on are live on YouTube, right. and um, we and we are live on Facebook. And somebody's phone's ringing. And That's uh, always the two o'clock signal, you know. We we have a very special guest today. Um, uh, 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 comedian called jeff stevenson he's currently starring in the invisible man <laughs> all right uh tom henry says hi to everyone sand art saying we see you on facebook so yeah we're live the interesting thing about our uh, chris hall says hi guys great to hear jeff is on tonight there's one problem with our comedian he's being funny he he's not here no, yeah, well, hopefully, he's going to be very, very shortly. So, hi, Tom. Hi, Chris. And I'll tell you the story, obviously, about Jeff as soon as he turns up. Yeah, it'll be very, very good. If you don't know Jeff, um, Jeff is a comedian. He's got. He's... <laughs> yeah, just to let you know, by the way, Sunday is today. Yeah, <laughs> right now. So, uh, hopefully, we will see Jeff very shortly. You're probably clicking the connections and once jeff arrives i will tell you everything about it these are the people we got with us hi sean yes chris is yeah okay so as i said if you're watching on our facebook group please let me know that you're on the group because we're trying to test a few things to see what works and as soon as jeff clicks the button and comes live with us we will introduce jeff because we got so much to talk about and ladies and gentlemen i'm just going to get rid of you chris we have. Hey, how are you? There he is, Jeff Stevenson. Hello, Jeff. Welcome. How are you, guys? Can you hear me? We can hear you fine, Jeff. First of all, Jeff, because we haven't had a chance to introduce each other. First of all, I'd like to introduce hang you. On, hang on, hang on. I've got. Yep, go for it. Two... I've got two websites going at the same. That's okay. Don't worry. That's what we're like. We get so confused. You know, we don't plan anything. Things go wrong. Things go crazy. But they're fun. We've got a few people ask. Hi, Lorna. So, Jeff, I'm going to introduce first. Hang on, Pete. I've got about, I've got about four. You do it. About four do going it. at the same time. Hang on. Sure. How do I get out of What? You need to shut everything down except StreamYard. Close, just shut everything off except StreamYard. Thank you, Lorna. You can see us on the Facebook group, which is fantastic. So we've got quite a few people watching already, which is great. And people want to ask Jeff a question. Are you okay now, Jeff? I think I – can you hear me once? Yes. We can hear you once. I'd like to hear you twice. So first of all, Jeff, <laughs> may I introduce, first of all, Chili from Chili Cruises. How are you doing, Hi, Jeff. Chili? How you doing? Yeah, and down below me – is John, he's got USA, only John Usa. Hey, John. Actually, it's John Reekmeyer. And John hey. is a Minnesota pot farmer. He grows pot in Minnesota and, and uh, I guess smokes it or something. I don't know what he does with it. Turns it into oil. So he's a pot farmer. So Jeff, I, just... I want you to know that I don't do anything that the federal government does not know about and is not a partner within. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you believe that, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I mean, I mean, Jeff. We've got so much to talk about. You know, I mean, and obviously the history of what you know yourself as a comedian. But if, if anybody's watching this, first of all, Jeff and me, we go back a, a scary way, Jeff, don't we? We went to school together. We did. We went to the Barbara Speak Stage School. Yeah. Now, the guy, our friends in America, obviously won't know anything about that, but um. Phil Collins' mother, June, she was our agent, Jeff, wasn't she? That's right, absolutely right, yeah. Amazing lady. When did you go there, Jeff? When did you start? Uh, 1973 to 76. 
Wow. And your mum, your mum was a chaperone. She was. You're correct. I'm going to talk about that in a bit, actually, about things yeah. that you've done. Now, the guys don't, I mean, how I, I try to describe to the chaps what our score was like, especially the Americans. Chili does understand. John doesn't understand. You know, I, it's, it's, I was saying if you watch Centrinians, that gave you an okay. idea. Absolutely nothing like it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, yeah, come on, what are you what are you talking about? What school did you go to? It was a hut. I just it meant was a, it was a hut in in East London, uh, in East uh, East Acton, and um, where where uh, um, blokes uh, used to have to do dance lessons uh, who really didn't want to be doing the dance lessons, and we were yeah. just there for the jolly. Let's be honest. We were Jeff, weren't we? Guys. Uh, John, it's having fun, you know, having, oh, having a okay. laugh. Yeah, uh, just like watching the president. So oh, you yeah. you go from going to school with Pete to starring in movies and and and, and doing a game show. Me? I, I, well, I did a game show, yeah, but a long long time after I left the school. The school was great, by the way. I wasn't dis disrespecting the school. It was a fantastic school, and we had a lot of fun, a we lot did. of fun. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it was nothing. I mean, it was no, people imagine it's going to, because it was a private school, it'd be like a big public uh, or pri private school. I think you call them public schools in, in the States. Uh, it was nothing like that, was it, Pete? Let's be honest. It really wasn't, you know. And the good thing about it is so many of us have stayed in contact. I dug out, I dug out, Jeff, just a couple of old photos, yeah? Blimey. There's not that many photos of the school, you know, because, I mean, that was our yard. That's where we were kind there of people, you know. There you go. This is one photograph I dug out. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. Jeff. On the left. On the left. So and this, round... kid, this kid here, just show that photograph again, Pete. Is that Pete fixing his hair? <laughs> this kid here in the in the front, uh, he was uh, the kid in uh, 40 Towers, uh, ah. a famous episode of 40 Towers. The young lad, the young boy in the, uh, in the restaurant when he was uh, having a go at uh, John Cleese. Do you remember this? This is a Jeff, famous episode. Can I tell you something, Jeff? Because this, it, the industry is all about what ifs. They came down to, to two people to choose between two people for that part. It was you. One was me well, and one was our friend. And he got it. And he was wonderful in it. Tony Page. Tony pa Toby Page, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Jeff, this is how you remember me at school, yeah? Oh, yeah. Blimey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know there's a story to that because uh, Jeff, um, there is a story, isn't there? Because in the corridor, all our photographs were on a wall for a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I went into school one day. They didn't tell us the photographer was there. I turned up, had uh, in my crazy hair, got ushered in. The photographer went click, click. Thank you very much. I had a whole year of walking around that photograph. Can you believe that? Eh? Yeah, yeah. No, I remember that. I remember the photographs. It was, it was all for a, um, a, a, a spotlight. It was a casting directory that uh, we, we had to go in, if you remember. And we did. It cost yeah. about 15 quid to go in for the year. My brother's asked you a question. You remember my brother, Chris, Chris don't yeah, you? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah, that's Chris. Yeah, he's, how's your ballet, he says. <laughs> Terrible. Awful. Worse than my tap. <laughs> <laughs> and and modern dance. We used to do modern dance as well. Uh, didn't we do a, a class called the History of Ballet? <laughs> the didn't History we? of Ballet. <laughs> what a waste of time that was. Do you know what? We actually we, we actually refused to do ballet after a while because we had to wear these tights, guys. And then, and yeah. we tights, you know, we really didn't. Because and and so we said, okay, we're not going to do this unless you let us wear jeans. Yeah. Because the girls were naughty, weren't they? You know what I mean? Well, it, 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 it sorted out the boys from the boys. And they certainly did that. Now, Jeff, I, I was really interested in looking, looking at your history originally, didn't you? You went to Sorry, the family. You went to the family. I did. I'm hearing sounds going. Is that you, John? Well, that's John in the USA, yeah? Turn that thing up, John. Yeah, yeah. I'm How dealing with it. I'm dealing know? with it. Okay. So, Jeff, you went to Faraday's, yeah? And Faraday. I saw the story, Faraday. And that was quite a tough school, wasn't it? Right opposite our school. 
And I saw one day, what made you? You walked in to speak. So what happened? Uh, that's a long story. I was, I was working in the uh, greengrocers uh, and, um, uh, called Franks of East Acton. And this young lady who uh, was the, the, the owner's daughter was at Barbara Speaks, very glamorous young lady called Vicky, Vicky, uh, Vicky Hewitt or Vicky Stratford, one of the two, Vicky Hewitt, I think her name was, yeah, Vicky Hewitt. And uh, she was um, uh, the, the, the owner's daughter and I hated the job, hated it with a vengeance. And um, I told her that I wanted to be a comedian. I wanted to be an actor. And uh, so she said, well, why don't you join Barbara Speaks? Uh, so I said, well, my parents uh, are poor, you know, we're working class. And so um, she said, well, jo join the agency. So the next day, I just had it in my mind. And we were walking past the school, me and my mates going for the fish and chip lunch. It sounds so British to you American guys. So we were going for our fish and chips at lunchtime. And uh, I just darted into the school. Uh, and I walked into the school. And uh, this woman came out. She looked like Princess Anne on drugs. Right? <laughs> and it was, it was, it was Barbara Speak. It was yeah. Barbara Speak, who was the owner, who, who Pete's laughing because it's had so true. Yeah. And uh, I, you must have a picture somewhere, sure. Um, so, uh, I, 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 I should she, have, actually, but I don't. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, so she, she, she came out. She, what are, who are you? What do you want? What do you, what? So I said, I said, I go to Faraday. She went, what, what are you doing here? So I said, well, I'm working at the greengrocer's shop and uh, Frank's daughter, Vicky uh, Hewitt, goes here. I said, and uh, also I know a lady called Cheryl Honor. And she's to, uh, told me to come in and I want to be a comedian. So she said, if you want to be a comedian, come in here. So she took me into this room, uh, this office, which you know you know where the office was. And uh, this lovely, glamorous, blonde lady was in there who was Phil Collins' mum, June Collins. So she yeah. said, well, what, what, what's this about? So she said, well, this boy wants to be a comedian. He goes to Faraday. She said, you want to be a comedian? I said, yeah. So I've done a few shows um, for Cheryl Honor. She said, well, stand up and show us what you do. So I stood up and did two minutes of jokes. I was 13. And uh, they said, right, you're starting tomorrow. So I said, hang on. I said, I just want to join the agency. I said, no, nope, you're going to join the school. We want you. So I said, but I go to Faraday. He said, just go in and tell them that you're going to join the school. I said, well, what about my parents? She said, well, ring your mum. Ring your mum and dad and tell them. So I rang my mum and I told her that uh, Barbara Speak had said she wanted me to join the school. Uh, and uh, oh, and Barbara Speak said we'll do it on a grant. We'll get, we'll let you earn fees, and it'll pay them. So, so uh, she said, go, go over. To, yeah, pay the pay for from jobs. So I go over to the uh, uh, um, Faraday, and I go in. This is a true story. I go in to see the headmaster, who didn't like me anyway. His name was Mr. Mead. We called him Bomber because he had a shrapnel uh, wound, and he used to go like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So I walked in, he went, Stevens, uh, my, my real name's Stevens, not Stevens. He said, Stevens, what do you want? I said, oh, sir. I said, I'm leaving. What do you mean you're leaving? Are your parents moving? I said, no, no. I said, I want to go to uh, Barbara Speaks. I said, I've been invited to join Barbara Speaks. He said, when? I said, tomorrow morning. He said, you're going to join the stage. I said, yes, tomorrow morning. He went, get out of my office. So he said, just go. So as I walked out, he actually said these words. And I've always said this would be a great word. Um, Great title of a book. He went, oh, another boy with ambition. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, guys? Yeah, do you know what? Before very long, yeah, before very long, we had. There you go. Now, yeah. how about that, eh? Now, guys. I know what that's from. You can, you haven't changed a bit, Jeff, you know? No, not much. Chili, yes. Yeah. Yes, then, Chili. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a long time ago, Pete. You know, you, you, were you were you uh, were you in Bugsy, Pete? I you know remember. Jeff, yeah, one of the biggest gutters for me because, as I said, I missed out, and to Toby Page got the job. You know, which is a great shame. And yeah. with with Bugsy Malone, they wanted the dancers because you had Donald War, Steve Cabell, all the guys from our school were the, were the yeah. dancers, and they auditioned us. And I passed the audition to do it, but yeah. then. I got Hans Anderson, so I ended up working at the London Palladium doing Hans Anderson, Hill, you know, and with that lot. But Bugsy Malone, I mean, that's become an absolute all-time cult classic, hasn't it? Everyone says that, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, my mother might have chaperoned you, Jeff, on that one as well, because you filmed it at uh, Pinewood. Well, we did. We filmed it at Pinewood. I, I was fourteen. I, 
I think I got away with not having a chaperone. Um, the, the only chaperone I remember, I remember there was a lady called Annie Hall, uh, yeah. Mrs. Hall from Corona, and there was a lovely lady called Mrs. Jones who was a chaperone. But right. I don't think we, I think we got away without having chaperones. So I, okay. just, I just remember I just remember a car coming every day, a lovely uh, Ford Granada with a chauffeur called George, and he used to pick us up every day. And the people down our street, we hadn't told anybody down our street that I was doing this film, and they were like, "What's going on?" And my mum wouldn't tell them, you know. So uh, we had used to go. Oh, it was such a great, great summer. So what was it like doing it? What was it like, you know, Jodie Foster? You know, well, <laughs> I, I think I put her off me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you run? Did you run riot? You know, with with uh, the gun. I, yeah. Uh, do you know what? Say again. Did you those guns? You had you the had splurge, the splurge guns. Gun. Splurge guns. Yeah, it was great. Well, we had splurge. I don't. I mean, you, you might have read this, but we had this splurge uh, stuff. That, um, and it, at first, the first few weeks, it was everybody's eyes. We were getting sore eyes, you know, because. And so they, they, in the end, they changed it and they got the mixture from Marks and Spencers. It's a famous store that we have in the UK, guys. And uh, it was just, uh, it was, and it was edible. So, you know, people were getting hurt and then they were eating it. So, wow. Yeah. I have to ask a question. Go on. Now, Pete's brother is claiming that Pete can't sing. I assume, yeah. Jeff, that Pete looks like hell in tights too, so he can't dance. Looks like hell in tights and can't sing. Yeah. No wonder well, you've been successful and there's Pete. But we, uh, I have to tell you, when we did Bugsy Chili, none of us sung because we, we all mimed. Uh, all the, oh. the, most of the, the, the singing was by Paul, uh, Paul Williams. Okay. You know, yeah. So, uh, and a load of session singers that he had. So none of us sung. I mean, it, it, we, when we were doing it in the studio, it was all out of tune because we, we were miming. When you say Paul Williams, do you mean Petite Paul Williams? I do, yeah, little Paul okay. Williams, um, who's still alive, still around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 brilliant. And he, do you know, for quite a few years, he used to send us all Christmas cards, all the wow. cards, he used to send a message at Christmas, hope you're well, great guys, what you did with my film and all this, you know, so yeah, yeah he's a lovely, lovely man. Yeah, I mean, incredible times, weren't they, Jeff? But I mean, it's like 44 years ago, something crazy like that. It's scary, isn't it? A uh, bit, bit longer than that, I think. I'm, I'm 59, and I was, I was 13, so it's 40, 46 years ago. 46 years ago, yeah. Children. They're was, just children, Chili. Yeah, yeah these, these young pups. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. what's the story with you guys? You all go on cruises together. What, what, t t tell me what happens with the cruises. Well, okay, Jeff, I'll start with you, John. You can start with that one. Well, um, I'm a fourth generation sugar farmer here in the Midwest and now recently yeah. got into hemp and other things that are a little more sophisticated and require yeah, yeah. paperwork about this high. But I've also been in the broadcast business since uh, for 40 years. And before that, I was in the uh, entertainment business uh, traveling in show groups. We, uh, oh, what? Yeah. we did uh, dancing, singing and comedy and everything like that, mostly across Canada. And yeah. so anything to get did away we, from the farm back when I was young. And you uh, but yucks? I'm sorry. Did you do Yuck Yucks, the comedy clubs in Canada? Oh, yuck no, yucks? no. We had our own contained group. All we, right. Okay. We only worked in nightclubs and uh, the big things from, you know, Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, just yeah, across yeah. The, big, the big towns. And I live right tucked under Canada. So it's just a right. jump. I was in Canada for five years. Uh, yeah, but yeah. then, uh, you know, in my later years, I started doing cruises and accidentally met th the screens are backwards here, met this guy up here and yeah. uh, we just got talking too much and we decided that we should, uh, have some fun and, and kind of get people who are solo cruisers. He's a, so he, he's wait a minute. He's a solo cruiser. Yeah, <laughs> I'm above you. It's easy to do chili. He's a solo cruiser and I'm a solo cruiser. And the, the cruise lines, other than Norwegian, are not so favorable to solo cruisers. And so uh, right. we've kind of set our goal to have some fun and to, uh, you know, try and help the people that are solo cruisers both get the best deals that they can. Yeah, but, yeah. But also to not be alone when they're out on these cruise ships. Yeah, that's great. Great idea. And chili. Yeah. I started cruising shortly after Christopher Columbus. <laughs> uh, I, actually, uh, uh, I think you your first 
working on a cruise ship was like in the 80s, if I'm correct on that. Yeah, on the camera. Yeah. A I ship. started cruising in the late 70s. So, so, so I mean, I go lines? way back. What lines? And, you know, since then, I've just I've just been a regular cruiser. I've, uh, back in the day, I used to do a lot of groups, took uh, up to 60, 70 people on cruises. Um, and then I, I just started this past year uh, cruising solo. And, and because I was a little worried about going by myself on a cruise, I started seeking out some of these solo folks and they ran into Pete. And, yeah, sadly. <laughs> and it's history. So, yeah. so, so in, the, in, the, in the late 70s, Chile, was that on the Chiandras and people like that? No, I, I was uh, a carnival guy. Carnival, yeah. So uh, the original carnival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you ever uh, come across an old, old mate of mine called Larry Larkin? Larry Larkin, I remember the name. Yeah, British comedian. He 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 did cruises long time before me, uh, and he worked in the, in the states out of Florida, and he worked on Chiandras as well. But I think Chiandras became celebrity. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And okay. I go back in the day. Once upon a time, I won a uh, fashion show, uh, a female fashion show, uh, where I was dressed in a black negligee and took oh, the wow. top prize. Yes, yeah, it changed now the ships. A little bit. And that was on a cruise yeah. ship, actually, yeah? Yes. So, Jeff, your first cruise as a comedian, the, how did it the happen? Canberra. Uh, did it... I think it was about 1988. Uh, I was working, doing all the clubs and summer seasons and all that sort of stuff. And my agent said, look, you know, do you want to do a cruise? Um, the guy's interested in you at uh, P&O. And I went and did this cruise uh, on the Canberra, uh, which is a famous ship here in the UK. And um, it was a three-week cruise down to the Caribbean, out of Southampton and back to Southampton. And they wanted six different shows. Yeah, and, I'm sure. And it just, it was the uh, biggest nightmare because I was dropped in at the deep end, uh, like you would not believe. I mean, the first two shows were fine. But by the third show, I was just, I was running out of things to talk about, jokes to do. I, I, I remember holding a joke competition on the radio on the on the ship just to get some jokes in, to get some material in. It was just, I bet it was the biggest learning experience. And even now, I still have that file. But it, it, I mean, I just did a cruise, I'm sure you, you're going to mention, uh, Pete, where I was on for five weeks because yes. of the, the virus. And... Um, that wasn't on board, I have to point out legally, was not on board. And um, uh, I went back to that file and I was thinking, right, okay, because I just need to keep finding material, you know, and it was great. Uh, but it's, it was great to have that experience to start off with. Yeah, I mean, it's saying not having the material, it must have been, it must have been madness. I mean, you know, what do you oh, do? It's a lot of shows. A, a, so a so on, on the five weeks that you did now, did you just start numbering the jokes so you could just stand up and go <laughs> 422 and then everybody could yeah. make reference and, and laugh appropriately? Or how did that how did that no, go I, after a while? I, well, I think times have moved on, thank God. I, I now don't just do jokes. I just, I'm observational and talk about uh, the cruise. Talk, I, was, I made a big running joke about talking about the ports that we never went to because, you know, we were constantly everywhere we were going they were closing and they were uh -huh. saying, you can't come here. You can't come here. You can't come here. So we were five weeks at sea without a port. So it was kind of like a slideshow. And now you're seeing yeah. Malta, the things yeah. that, you know, population and uh, economics and. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a nightmare. I mean, everywhere we were heading closed down and we, wow. uh, we, we ended up, we got re, uh, refueled and uh, uh, the stores taken on in um, uh, Durban. But we were five days in Durban before they would even let us go in to get the stores on and to get the uh, the, the, the fuel on. It was a nightmare. And then, and then we, we, we refueled in Tenerife, but they wouldn't let us in. We had to do it at anchor. So we never got off the ship for five weeks. Wow. Five weeks. Were and you what, like performing every day? Not every day. No, I did. Um, I think I did about four or five different shows. Plus I did a chat show a game show, uh, um, a liar's club, 
uh, all sorts of different bits and pieces. You know, that you would just, they, they would say, well, Jeff, can you do this? Can you do that? And it was, it was great. It was a, a lot of fun. Um, and it was the weirdest place because to get on the ship in Fremantle, Australia, and then to get off in uh, Southampton five weeks later, and the world had changed. Yeah. It was a completely different world that I came back to, but I left in Fremantle on March the 10th, and I got in on April the 12th into Fremantle. It was incredible. Um, James, and, uh, Southampton, sorry. Yeah. Tom Henry has said there should be all sorts of good jokes about the COVID ports, Miss Crew trying to get home. It's a real dodgy subject, isn't it, to talk about? It, to well, it is, you know, you, especially because, you know, obviously there's, there's tragedies, there's, there's tragic stories yeah. involved. But we were very fortunate that we didn't have any virus on the ship. We had no problems. So we could make jokes. I mean, I, we, we have a, 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 a great guy in uh, England that just recently, oh, oh by, by the way, this is true, and this is not me talking out of school. Um, one of our entertainers, he had a slight cough and they panicked. So they said, right, every, all, the, all the entertainers, yeah, yeah, all the entertainers need to be isolated. So we were isolated in our cabins for a week. Thank God I had a balcony cabin. We were isolated for a week. So then they, they realised when they tested him, when we got the Durban, it was not, it was negative. So they, uh, my, my opening line was, you know, it, it mean nothing this in the States, but we have this guy who presents the Good Morning Show in uh, Great Britain, and he just came out recently, and it was a big shock to everyone, called Philip Schofield, Pete, you know. So yeah. I said, I came out, and my opening line was, you know, I've been a week, I feel like Philip Schofield, I've been waiting for so long to come out, right, which got such a big laugh. But yeah, it, it, it's a, a topical joke in Britain. <laughs> Not in America. I so if you, if, you, if you didn't have a bathroom, did you have to hold it? Or how did that work then? If you, uh... <laughs> the, the, the days of not having a bathroom. We didn't have a bathroom on the camera. We had to. Uh, we had a shared bathroom for about six different uh, cabins. But six. No, this was six. six different cabins. Six. Six oh, different my. cabins. You used to have to um, uh, get in at quiet times to go and have a bath or to go and uh, have a shower or, you know. To go to the, yeah. yeah, you you kind of scheduled your time when you needed a window yeah. for your shows and things. Yeah, well, the shows, yeah, yeah. It was a, a weird. I mean, cruises have changed, but I have to say, the Canberra was a lot of fun. A yeah. lot of fun. We had a great time. You know what the old ships were like. You know, the, uh, many years ago they were great. I used to watch the Love Boat, so I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I work on uh, um, Princess quite a bit, and they still play Love Boat uh, theme tunes the when they do the, um, uh, and it's, I mean, it's, it's safety at sea, it's important for you and for me. And people just sit there and laugh, which is great, because even though it's a serious subject, it's good that you can sit there and, and laugh and have a, a joke about it. Yes. Uh, when, you, when you're working on a gig, when, when you're on a ship, yeah. are you... Do you get special uh, accommodations and stuff, or where, where do you fit in the hierarchy of staff? Uh, it, different different people get different deals. I, I, my deal is I get guest guest accommodation, same as same as what you would get. Okay. You know, well, so you're I, not I, down I'm, in the bottom. You're on a you're somewhere on the ship. Generally yeah, a yeah. balcony. Uh, not always. Sometimes. Sometimes not. But okay. it's normally, normally quite a de decent cabin. I mean, I I, I did my days of, of you know sure, being of course. Uh, in in the in the crew area, which nothing wrong with the crew area. But I you know when you I think as you get older, you, you do appreciate the home comforts. Your schedule, Jeff, is unbelievable. Well, I, I see you on Facebook. It was. It was. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's really now, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but I've been when, five oh, on ships, your sh I saw. I, I mean, I saw Jess stuff on Facebook with "I love my job," and I saw you posting from all over the place. I mean, how did it work? You'd be flying from one place to another, from one ship to another. That was crazy. Yeah, I've been I've been to Australia three times this year already. So yeah, yeah. Already, I mean, it would have been would have been, been four times. Uh, if if this hadn't happened, I would have gone back again in April. I so have my New Zealand shirt on. on. Go ahead, Chili. I have my New Zealand shirt on. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, lovely. I have Don't my China shirt on. China, really? 
No, of course, everything's made in China and America. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, Jeff and me are both dressed in black, aren't we? We're the men in black. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That, that, that's that side of the screen you see. So that's the UK oh. side of the pond, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're the American so, side of the pond. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna we're gonna make America again. Yeah. Right. Oh, good. Um, you 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 talk to Jeff, yeah. I mean, obviously, because you know they all got then different humor. We often say the Americans don't kind of get our humor. I mean, how it's not that different. It's not that different. Trust me, it's not that different. If you do your homework and you just and you you keep your subjects so that both of us, you know, if you I talk about, I'll talk about the BBC, Fox News, CNN, uh, and all that stuff. I, it'd be silly if I went on and talked about I don't know stuff that just the Brits get, but it's the same with the Australians. You know, you have to talk about stuff that everybody understands. I mean, most of my stuff now is is about the ship, or it's about world politics. You know, I would do stuff. I'll do stuff about Trump, but I'll also do stuff about our um, uh, Brexit. And and if if I bring everybody in, but I I now play part of my act is getting I, I bring. It's it's almost like a trick. I bring the Americans in, I bring the Australians in, and the Brits, and then I get them sort of. Um, I almost talk about the differences, and it brings them all together. And it's it, it, ninety nine times out of hundred goes really well. Yeah. What's your favourite audience? Yeah. So the Americans. Uh, well, I have to say New Yorkers are, are great for me, um, but and and the reason I say that is because I think they're similar to Londoners. Because it's it's a um, you know it's it's get out there and do it and and you've got to go for it and they I think the New York is a, a real the real London is like I think myself there's a bit of aggression there and I think it's the same with the New Yorkers you just got to get on with it and get where you got to get you know and I think it's the same on stage I've had some I, I tell a story and it's a true story I was my first time when I was really just getting to work the American audiences. And I was on the, the lovely old QE2. Did any of you guys go on the QE2? Yeah. No. Well, the QE2. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Well, well, Chile knows what it's like. It was a beautiful ship and it's in Dubai now. And it was a great ship. And we used to go across the Atlantic. We used to do it about two days quicker than the Queen Mary 2 does it now. Right. And uh, I loved it on there. Anyway, I was on there. This is a true story. I was on there and I did Southampton, New York. And I was in New York, I was staying on to uh, Barbados. So we go New York, Southampton, uh, Southampton, New York, rather. And I did really well, but, I, you know, not I didn't storm it. Uh, I didn't really, you know, kill it, but uh, I, I did well. And there was a lot of Brits and quite a few Americans, uh, and, but mostly Brits. And I went on, did okay. Uh, when we got to um, uh, New York, the... A lot of New York people came on. A lot of New York Jewish people came on. And I went on that night and I absolutely killed it. They loved it, right? And they were really cheering and whooping and, and I loved it. So the next day there was this British couple and this British couple came up to me and they said, oh, hello, love. Uh, yeah, from up north, uh, from a place we have in England called Blackpool, which is like Vegas uh, with, uh, uh, well, w w without the gloss, without buildings. Without the sun, without nice food. Yeah. But anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> so it's so, nothing like Las Vegas. So exactly. just hookers then? Is that all there is yeah. there? Is it just hookers? Is it? Not in Blackpool. It's not warm enough. Uh, oh. So, uh, <laughs> so, so this, this, this couple came up to me and they said, hello, love you. Right? I said, yeah. They said, oh. And I thought they're going to tell me how much they enjoyed it last night because I've got a standing ovation, which is unusual for a stand up comic. So this lady said, oh, we watched you last night. I said, oh, yeah. She said, those Americans, all that clapping and laughing and cheering, does it put you off? <laughs> <laughs> and people tell you, people tell you, anybody else who's British will tell you who's watching this, Brits are like that. They do not want to go over the top. You know, if you say, how are you? They will say, can't complain. Yeah. Mustn't grumble. Oh, mustn't what... grumble. I can't complain, which means that it's okay. You know, don't really want to. But if you say, how are you? Mm, you know, like the Americans, it's how you doing? Yeah, great. Everything's fantastic. Lovely. You know, well, the Brits are going, oh, what, what, you know, what's going on here? We're strange. 
Yeah, you're, thanks, ta- you're talking about New Yorkers. One of my favorite New Yorkers happens to be in our audience right now. Her name's Hi, Emily. Emily. She's from New York. Hi, Emily. And she wanted to know uh, what we thought about solo cruising and were we worried about it the first time. She also asked earlier how long I've been solo. My first solo was in November, this past November. So I'm a newbie to solo, Emily, and I loved it. I'll never go again uh, other any way other than solo. Yeah, Sunny says hello from the US. Um, so, Jeff, what is it like? I mean, obviously, when you're on the ship, you're walking just, on just in, just, hang on, just in case my wife watches this back, I am not solo. <laughs> yeah, correct. I just yeah. want to just make this clear. <laughs> I, I am not solo, but I'm, I'm sure I'll be entertaining people who are solo, but I am not just, just yeah. What's, right, it Jeff? Like, what's it like, Jeff, walking around the ship? Yeah, because obviously they people had seen you performing the night before are, are people stopping you all the time wanting to talk to you are they buying or they want to buy you drinks or or what um well you, you i just go around and i'm just myself and they're then you know normally they're fine and if anybody does go a bit over the top you know you just you you, you establish uh the situation after a few days you know you just but people people are normally very cool and i'm i, I like talking to people anyway i love it you know it's no problem absolutely no problem Pete. I want to talk about this um memories from a global gangster no 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 global gangster it's Ah, ah, ah. it's a play on words my spell check corrected me like a complete idiot sure that's the joke Uh, i didn't get it Jeff, Gag. the five weeks you had a tough run, this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, the five weeks you had on the Arcadia, you you obviously decided at some point to talk about um, your career from the beginning. I just, well, I was just bored, dude. I was honest. I, I, I was, you know, I, I get up in the morning, I think, and so I saw people were putting stuff on uh, about their lockdown and whatever, and I thought, right. So I started writing this thing on my, on my iPhone. I did it every every morning for about an hour. I did it the first day. And then by the second day I did it, I was getting all these lovely comments. And then I started putting them on a few websites um, or Facebook groups that I know, um, you know, Variety and um, uh, the school group that we, we went to. And, I was, and the, the, the feedback was incredible. So now I'm actually, I wrote a book many years ago, about 16 years ago, uh, an autobiography, but I never published it. But now I'm going to rewrite it because of what I did with those memoirs, which I, I think that, you know, it, it just, it was amazing, really. I never thought it would get that reaction. I've done about seven radio interviews uh, in the UK because of it, you know, which is great. Yeah, it's incredible, Jeff. It really is. I mean, you know, just, Thanks. it's a book, isn't it? To be honest with you. There, there, well, there's a book in all of us. You know, it really is. You know, if, if you sit there and, and think about what's what's happened over the years, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up. Chris, I've just seen a message come up from Chris, your brother. Is that, yeah. is that Chris? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Chris. You all right, mate? Yeah, keep up those good old stories, he says. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, this is what, great. What was your best, I mean, I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but what was your best memories on a cruise ship? On a cruise ship? Uh, probably, I, oh, I don't know, probably my first, first cruise on the Canberra, um, knowing that even though it was a tough one, I was go, I was going to stick to it. First, my best memory also would be going into Sydney for the first time. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I think going into New York, I never, ever tire of going into New York. I, no matter, I, I do the Queen Mary tour about four times a year. And I always seem to do the the um, uh, Southampton, New York. And I never tire of, of going into New York, even though we don't go right up to Manhattan now. Uh, I, I love getting up early in the morning, about half past four, five o'clock, and watching, you know, the, the New York appear. I love it. You know, Jeff, I had, you talk about that memory, because I had that one incredible memory. I was on the inaugural Encore Transatlantic yeah. cruise from Southampton to New York, um, yeah. last November, which is my last cruise. And the memory, I've got photographs on my Facebook, I'll never, ever forget, is us going past the Statue of Liberty when yeah. the, escape, the Norwegian escape came the other way we met at the statue of liberty at sunset yeah nice. it's just, 
you know, it's a, it's what for me, it's one of the highlights of my cruising life. It's just a yeah. unique, unique moment. It really is. So you say in New York, I'm saying New York for me. Yeah, I think you tried to swim from one ship to the other. Pete, <laughs> you just took it one too far. You know, you shouldn't have tried to do that. It was, it was embarrassing, Pete. It was. Yeah, I'm getting. I, love, I, I love Hawaii as well. I love Hawaii. I, I, I was very lucky a few years ago, uh, but my agent said to me, "Look, you know, we, 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 we want to. Uh, you get off a ship in Hawaii, you can either fly home or spend a week there waiting for the next one." I went, "It's a tough one." Oh. So I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait for a week. And I, I was really into my fitness, and I was getting up every morning doing the power walk for an hour, two hours, and I loved it. I had the most fantastic week there, even on my own. You know, it's just great. So I love all that. I love the ports that we go to. You know, um, the uh, I love Thailand. We we go to um, a place called Lam Shabang, uh, and you can either go to Bangkok or or Pattaya. And it's it's great. I love it. It's, it, it, I love going to. The, I, you know, I was thinking the other day. There's only one port that I don't like, and it, I, and I can honestly say I'd never be bothered about not going back again. And that's the one. I can't remember what it's called now, but it's in um, uh, Borneo, Kalatuma oh. Babimbo or something. Uh, Why? Why is that? But it was just boring. Wow. Totally boring. It was. It was like you get off, get on a bus to go to a shopping mall that you wouldn't go to if you was at home. You know, uh, it took, what was the name of the place? Tukuma, oh, it was some Kutukumumba. Akuna Tamara. No, Akuna hey, no, no. Tamara. Yeah, That's yeah. Lion like King. That was not good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it was in, in Borneo anyway, definitely Borneo, Borneo, I'm sure it was, which is part of Malaysia, isn't it? So, yeah. But I, lo I love it. I love the, the, the different ports that we go to. Even, I love, I'll tell you, one of my favourite cruises is the ones where we go around the British Isles. And we go, you know, to to uh, uh, Glasgow. Um, what do they call it? Uh, Greenock and uh, the Orkney Islands and the Shetlands. Fantastic. My brother Chris has said to Hull, yeah. Oh, to Hull and back. Yeah. Yeah. I know, I know. There's a link there, isn't there? There is. I've just done it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That was the link. There we go. The, the policeman. C. Parker. Yeah. yeah. That was only for, we have a series over here, Chile and John, uh, called Only Fools and Horses, which is a big, um, big. It was, it was as big as Seinfeld in the UK, and uh, I did two. I was I was the warm up man for a lot of the shows in the studio, uh, but I also did two episodes. One that, that picture there uh, as a com I played a comedian in a Rodney Stag night. Rodney's one of the stars of the show, and the other one was PC Parker into Hallenbeck, where the uh, uh, there's this big, you know, the big series, uh, scene up in uh, Hull, which is, and funny enough, I'm, I don't remember a cruise line ever going to, into Hull. Uh, no, but you see, my brother Chris has obviously decided to wind me up by putting that, but he doesn't realise he set it up perfectly. Chris, you couldn't have done a better job, my friend. <laughs> it's a radi Radio 2 link. It is a Radio 2 link, you're right. Emily Archie, yeah. let's see what she says. She's saying seeing MS Liberty from the NS Dawn was an experience for me as well. The last I'd seen MS Liberty was about 10 years ago when I was on a ferry boat in New York. So, uh, so you guys have got something on me I haven't got. I've never been on NCL. I've always wanted to, but never been on NCL. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, Jeff, with me, I mean, I, I discovered cruising. My first ever cruise was on the with Princess. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't do any research yet. I had no idea what I was doing, a complete idiot. I ended up on the Emerald Princess. Yeah. Which yeah, is, I've, I've worked on it many times. Yeah, lovely ship, really great ship. And we were did we? It was a back to back. It was the East Caribbean and it was the West Caribbean. That was my first ever cruise. And of course, it didn't have a great solo program, but I fell in love with cruising. I almost didn't get on that ship, by the way. My first ever time cruising, I got stuck at Heathrow Airport with Virgin for the first, literally waiting to get the plane. And then yeah. when I did get to um, the Fort Lauderdale, I was staying in this dodgy hotel jeff on the it was on hollywood beach an old hotel yeah. and it's the oldest one there and half of it was apartments and half of it was hotel and it, a bit, it, got, it got slated everywhere right but it was cheap and it was on the beach and i got this minibus to there when i came out on the minibus there was one person left on the minibus it went off i went into the reception checked in picked up my suitcase empty i had an oh, wow. empty suitcase i'm like oh my god 
I'm going on my first cruise. I've got no clothes. Someone has stolen my all my clothes. How did they do that? Then I realized I had the wrong case. And it was still on the minibus with this one lady from South America. And of course, they didn't want to know. They were like, no, no, no. I think, what am I going to do? I'm going to be on a cruise ship with no clothes. It's funny enough, some guy came in. He goes, I saw the company, phone them up. They still had the lady on board. And she got, luckily enough, what happens is South Americans fly over to Florida with empty suitcases to buy clothes. Clothes, yeah. And they fly back. And the, the guy, the poor old boy, had bought her they had literally took my case he thought it was my case but it was her case so he turned yeah. up an hour later and he goes in all the 40 years of me doing this job i have never ever done that ever yeah, done that. yeah? and then literally two days later my hotel was on fire <laughs> oh what a nightmare so I very nearly didn't get on a cruise but it was emerald it was literally with emerald oh, sorry on the on the princess emerald Fantastic ship, loved it, fell yeah. in love. But then I discovered Norwegian Cruise Line, Jeff. Um, John, tell us about Norwegian Cruise Line because you're the expert on that. Well, I've just been a Norwegian fanboy for a lot of years, and uh, the big reason is because of their solo program. They uh, they just uh, have a person assigned to the solos, and they do events. And uh, other than a kind of a disastrous event that Pete was a part of after I got off the ship one time. Uh, generally, it's just a lot of fun. They take you to dinner. They have seating for you right behind the high-paying people on the ship. They have the yeah. next rows that are uh, for the solos, and they just kind of push you together in friendly. There, there's a picture of a group. Yeah. Uh, you know, they just push you together, and so you make friends. And uh, uh, through that, uh, I well, I met the well Pete, not Chile. I met him on the internet, but. But you just meet people that I'm still in touch with. Um, we're going to have some two women uh, that they may or may not be listening today. But uh, on my last <laughs> trip, that uh, they're my age, they drive motorcycles. And they're going to come yeah. from Florida up to the hemp harvest here this fall uh, just to be <laughs> part of and see the hemp harvest. Most pot. <laughs> We we you say that word like it's a bad word. You 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 <laughs> you say that word yeah. like you know, but it's just you you make you make friends that are are genuine friends, and you may not check up with them for a long time, and all of a sudden you start talking, and it's like they never left the seat next to you. Yeah, Jeff, Robert says that you might go on a cruise to Hull, but you might not get out again. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with Hull. Trust me, Hull's all right. It's uh, it's not a bad place. Yeah. I am uh, supposed to be I, right now, right this minute, uh, on my way between uh, Victoria into Vancouver. I'm supposed to land in Vancouver tomorrow morning and get off and fly home. I yeah. should have been in Alaska the last eight days. I think I was meant to be in Alaska as well. I was meant to be on the uh, Queen uh, oh Queen Elizabeth. Where are you? I've lost you. Yeah, uh, we're still here. I've lost you. Hang on, hang on. I've lost you. I've lost you. I've lost you. Yeah, you're off Jeff, you're still here with us, by the way. If you can't see, yeah, us. you're with us. All right, I've lost your uh, picture. How do I get that there? Hang on. Uh, hang I, on. I don't know. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Look at oh, the little God. red circle up at the top. The little red circle is the tab that's us. Uh, no, well, we can you. certainly see you, and we can hear you, so there's not any problem there. All right. Okay. Uh, that means, guys, we can put anything on the screen and Jeff won't know what it is now, will he? Exactly. <laughs> we could get away with anything. <laughs> I have a, I have a, a, a question for you. I mean, you're you're not you're a little younger than I am than John and I are. John's a little yeah. younger than I am, but I'm a lot younger, uh, older than you are. Will you have any second thoughts about cruising again? Not none whatsoever, and no, I'll be there. Go I'll be there. Absolutely not, not a problem at all. I love the sh ships, and I actually feel safer on the ships than I do when I'm at home because uh, they're so clean. It's, I've been, now, wait a minute, know, but you gotta you gotta qualify that. Is your wife on the ship with you, or is she at home? <laughs> at home, I, I only get, professionally I feel safer than uh, when I'm at home because it's they're so uh, uh, clean the ships. I'm gonna go onto the stream streamyard thing again. So let me just. So is this gonna work again? Well, we'll see. You know, you might just disappear from it, but if you do, you come back on again, then Jeff. 
you know, yeah. we're getting close to the end anyway. So, oh. uh, you see us now, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I'm still. All right. Okay. Okay. It's it's telling me about Chrome and all that. That's all right. That's good. Well, no, I, I feel safe when I'm on now, but I really do. Um, I, I mean, I'm sorry that you know what happened with some of the ships, but uh, you know these things happen. It's just, it's it's very sad, you know. I mean, have, has your agent? I know you've got an agent who put your who you work with for the ships. Yeah, is that correct, Jeff? With that? I, I've got you back. I've got you back. Hey, uh, I've, I've, yeah, I've, I, I've got I've, an agent uh, uh, just specialised in booking uh, entertainers on cruise ships, and, and they're absolutely brilliant. I mean, to finish off with, Jeff, because one of the questions, obviously, so many people are asking about is, you know, when do we think cruising will start again? When's it all going to kick off again and stuff? We all miss cruising. None of us really know. But um, as, as obviously, the one thing they have to do on a cruise ship, guys, is they have to crew up the cruise ship, first of all, to get all the crew back on board. And, of course, they have to organise um, the entertainment which you yeah. are one, you know. So have have they spoken to you? Has anyone said anything to you about when you might be back? Uh, not really. I mean, we I have stuff booked in for this year and next year, and it's just being cancelled as we go along. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm cancelled up until uh, I think the end of June, uh, you know, and then I'm sure I'm going to be cancelled for July. But it, who knows? I mean. Uh, some of the some of the ships are saying on their websites that it's August the first that they're going to come back. Some are saying September. Some are saying not until. I mean, I know that Princess, uh, the Crown Princess, I was meant to be on there quite a bit this summer, and that's been cancelled. The whole season, the whole European season, has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. So who knows? I'm sure when it's safe, or when they've got um, customers, and when they can get into places, it'll come back. As I mean, we're all waiting to get back. Yeah, we, we really hope to see you on a cruise ship one day. And have you got any advice for anyone that wanted to be a performer on a cruise ship? What would they do? How would they do it? What advice would you give them, Jeff? Oh, I, I, it's it's tough. You know, it's a tough one. You you have to you, you have to have more than enough material, uh, mm. and you have to be able to know that if you get on that ship, you 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 want that first show to be a strong one because you're stuck on there for three or four days or a week with people that you've performed to. So you really want it to be a strong one. So my advice would be don't do it until you're ready, until you 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 know you you can handle it. And that, you know, it's I've I've seen some disasters where um acts have come out of the clubs and just said, Oh, I can handle a cruise ship, having not done their homework, having not done any research whatsoever, and it all goes horribly wrong. Got a question yeah. from Sonny here. He, um Sonny says, I have a question, sorry you hadn't already spoke about this coming late. How long have you contracted on a ship and do you have your own cabin i bet i guess well, you first do of all, let me just address the do you have your own cabin it's a yeah. stupid question sorry <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> do you have your own cabin no no i'm on a ship but to go there's a little ship behind that comes up <laughs> at night and takes all the entertainers off and we sit on a raft waiting before we can come back and join the people for the buffet breakfast do you have your own cabin Sonny, Sonny. come on get your act together go and think that rethink that question do so you have your own cabin? Are you serious? What I don't know what line do you go on? Anyway, uh, uh was you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> how long north. do you how long do you get uh, contracted for? Yes. Um well it depends if you're a resident entertainer or a guest entertainer. A guest entertainer will be booked for anything from uh well two or three days to a week, but I think that might change now. I think there's that some of the uh, acts will be booked for longer. Um, because I think that that situation is going to is is going to change. I'm sure. Sorry, sorry, Sonny. Uh, Sonny, I'm only joking. He, 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 I hope yeah. you were uh, offended by that. But do I, you have your own cabin? Yeah, it lives on the lifeboat. Yeah, I love it, Sonny. That was a great question. It really was. I love it, Jeff. Um, um, I mean, Chitty, thank you so much as always. We we call ourselves the Cruise Amigos. Um, John, thank you so much. But I've got to say a huge thank you. We feel so honoured and privileged. I'll to come off it. On board. Nice to talk to you. Nice you know, to talk to you guys. Yeah, and great. We go back so many years, and I cannot wait to hopefully one day the Cruise Amigos are on a ship with you. That would I be hope so, mate. I really hope so, guys. Take care. So, uh, I would say cheers, guys. I've got my sherry. John, have you got your drink? We're going to go cheers. Yeah, wine o'clock. Oh, Nob Creek. <laughs> <laughs> so, cheers. All the best, Jeff. All the very cheers, best. Guys. Cheers, cheers. cheers, everybody. Thanks a lot. All Bye the best. Guys. See you. Bye, guys. Bye.